all this is mubeen sayed dr mubeen sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so a quick update about my arm much better than before i went out for a physiotherapy session yesterday feeling great still not fully there to be able to draw because when i draw i lean on it so uh, my therapist said please give it a rest so today and tomorrow i'm not going to draw too much so we'll go more with the uh, presentations so my apologies in advance for a different kind of uh, style um so looks like one quick second it looks like my facebook side was not working you never know when somebody would just block you anyways so um uh, today and tomorrow less than i would have another session on the weekend as well so with this let's start our discussion what i wanted to do there is so so much information right now that we need to pause so today i'll do two talks one is going to be about these countries and then the other one is going to be about the latest news for vaccines so let's start our discussion i hope you're all doing well and safe and happy and healthy and margaret tom welcome and of course Uh, we mixed you with margaret as well so all margarets welcome so uk us france australia and denmark disclosure is none i love this from mark twain the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read so starting with the us 70% of the eligible population in the us is vaccinated and the us cases are actually dropping and again i know there are going to be political messages here saying hey okay, this state is not doing well and that state is not doing well i'm looking at us as one nation and overall numbers we can look at various cases separately and here let's just very quickly look at the numbers as well and all of these links are present in the description of this talk so here is united states this is the number i hope it is this is our world in data i hope it is clear so this is daily new confirmed cases so if you see here the daily new cases still 76000 cases but they are dropping they are dropping with this wave that we are in right now the peak was somewhere about 172000 so compared to that we are at 76000 and the previous peak that was in january that was 251000 so uh, with this peak we are actually uh, going downwards which is excellent news i also wanted to make sure that we look at the death rate as well because what you would see is as much as sometimes we'll say the number of cases are too many you would also see that the death and hospitalization is slowly decoupling and reliably decoupling and that would and my apologies on this side is kairi so she is standing right here and she would just keep flowing at me so please you give me this leverage as well that i talk with her as well on the way hey kairi okay so cases per million people so if you see here once again about 229 cases per million people keep this number in mind because as we see other countries you would be able to keep those comparisons in mind as well so 229 again i actually think comparing various com- countries is not really an apples to apples compar- comparison because of the policies people's behaviors and the uh, and the interventions so cumulative numbers yes we are in a bad state from a cumulative numbers point of view this is the cases per million october 20 confirmed cases so once again cumulated and a lot this is cases per million bi weekly i compared it to uk here once again as i said it is not interesting to compare countries like this they are very very different from their uh, demographies but still it is interesting to see how waves may be superimposed or not so here you have a almost superimposed wave and then over here you are seeing that united states is actually trending downwards and uk unfortunately is trending upwards 
and this is why I brought UK in. So it is not to compare to the country, but to kind of see in context. And here is the biweekly change in confirmed cases. So once again, UK is slightly upwards. United States is a lot downwards compared to this um, wave over here. And let's look at the unfortunate and sad part. There are two important sad parts of this pandemic. There are many, but two important from a health point of view. One is deaths and second is long COVID. Long COVID is going to make people miserable for a very long time. So here, this is the confirmed new deaths. So this is the absolute numbers. And once again, absolute numbers are not comparable because the populations are different. But still, if you see here, US's numbers are going down. UK's new numbers, absolute numbers are trending and staying down. But per million, this is a rate. So this is comparable. So if you see here, this is daily new confirmed COVID-19 deaths per million people. And here in the US, the daily new deaths per million people are five. And UK per million people, new deaths are two. UK has, even when you'll see that there is a lots of new cases, uh, one of the highest infection rate in the world at this time is with UK. Uh, you would see that there is a decoupling of the uh, death rate, which is a good thing. I, I would not sit here and say, I want the, these to be, to be coupled. So this is the US. So generally, what is the summary for US? US is trending downwards. US has gotten real bad um, outcome. We have so many people who died, so many cases. But if you see here, we are trending downwards. And the deaths are also trending downwards. But they are, you would see, keep this data in mind. And as we see UK, you would see that UK has a more decoupling compared to US. Now let's look at the second part, the UK. So very quickly for UK, currently UK, and I'll show you the data in a second, one of the highest infection rate in the world once again in UK. And if we take UK as a previewer, as a harbinger of what is going to happen in the world, then usually what happens is UK goes, uh, you know, and gets a new variant or, or a lot of new cases, and then the world follows in a similar pattern. I think this time there is an important pattern to observe. And I may be wrong, but please observe that pattern that even when the cases are more, the deaths are less. So if this happens, that there are cases, people become infected and immune, and the death does not occur or is very less, then it is still a good outcome. However, still it is important to have no cases or to not be infected. It is a dangerous infection. So one of the highest infection rates in UK, UK is 80% eligible people vaccinated, not 80% of the population, but 80% of eligible. US is 70% eligible pop, uh, vaccinated, eligible vaccination, uh, population vaccinated. UK is 80%. Now, I want to show you the death rate, but when we are looking at this data, keep in mind, there are going to be so many reasons. It's a society we're talking about. We're not talking about a static state of some uh, place. It is a society. People are walking, talking, moving out, moving in, going to bars, going to uh, groceries, wearing masks, not wearing masks, taking care, not taking care, schools, uh, kids going to schools, people going to pubs, and so on. So it's not a single unit which is frozen in time. It's a living society. So of course, there are many dynamics. Some of those could be kids going to school, catching it. They are not becoming infected, but others can become infected from them. Waning in immunity. Again, I have put that over here to highlight only one part, in my opinion, Waning immunity is actually a normal, natural behavior of our immune system. And waning immunity, if it results in somebody becoming reinfected but not dying, 
then the protection or efficacy against severe and hospitalized outcomes is there. If that is there, then maybe waning immunity is not just the only bad thing. It is still protective. Now, the question really to answer will be, do we need the society to stay at a higher ramped up immune system state? Do we need to give boosters? And as you can see, majority of the countries are now giving boosters, including US. So waning immunity. Then uh, I was reading, I was uh, preparing. That's why the Mark Twain's uh, quote, quotation as well. And one of the professors uh, had said that maybe AstraZeneca's efficacy is not as good as uh, Pfizer's. I think AstraZeneca's, if we do this kind of a comparison as an efficacy, there may be some points differences, but not so much to say that is the only one factor to be blamed for the society's infections. Then is it possible that the society was opened on July 19th and the pubs were open and the mask mandates became relaxed and people started moving out? Maybe that caused more infection to spread through the society. Less masks, infections more in the young and maybe new variants. And maybe there may be more factors and maybe the factors that I'm saying are not the right factors. But there are some thoughts here. Now let's look at the UK's data. I wanted to put that data in the context of this article over here. This article says, Delta's surprise. UK comeback is a warning sign for the US. So they try to put that in the context that, hey, what's happening in the UK is going to happen in the US as well. But there are certain... Uh, things over here, for example, read this, up 35% over the last week, so infections. Over the last two weeks, new cases are currently averaging more than 45,000 a day. And we'll look into that in a second. They will soon surpass July's initial data peak of about 47,000. On a per capita basis, the UK's average daily case rate is more than 2.5 times as high as the US. And then more than four times as high as European Union, nearly five times as high as Germany, more than nine times as high as France, and more than 15 times as high as Spain and Italy. Then down here, they also talk about um, deaths and hospitalizations. About 15% 15 of the UK adults now say they'd never wear a mask. The polls also found that Brits were less cautious and they talked about uh, death here in this article somewhere as well. So this is the context. Let's look at the situation. This is UK's data. This is UK's local data points, Wales, England, U United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. And they have, so this is the cases per 100,000. So this is case rate comparison to the local geographies. And uh, I hope I'm <laughs> saying it correctly. Uh, and if you can see here, per 100,000, Wales is having more cases compared to others. But I want to go to um, overall cases and the death rate. And I want to make a point here. So United Kingdom, this is the confirmed cases. Again, not the death rate, but if you see for a population that is 80% vaccinated eligible population 80 percent vaccinated not all populations 80 percent the this is the wave one in july not wave the previous wave in july and look we almost have a new wave forty-six thousand new cases here in this wave in july forty-seven thousand new cases and that is a wave so we have one more wave when we have 80 percent vaccination but Let's look at the death rate. So this is the new confirmed cases. This is not death rate. This is the number of deaths. And if you see here, let's say 19 July is when UK opened. So here is August. This is July, somewhere over here, 19th of July. I remember talking about it here. This is the place where UK started opening up. From then on, the death rate has, no, sorry, not rate, number of deaths have actually gradually increased. 
but not as if you see in the previous um, peaks. And it is interesting for me to read various articles. It really depends how somebody's slant is, what is their leaning. I saw some articles that compared this valley, this lower part, to this higher number of deaths and made that into a times to say five times or 10 times. And they ignored or neglected that compared to the previous wave in January, the newer wave of deaths are 10 times less. So look here, for example, 130 deaths. Again, every single death is a sad thing. And compare this to January 25, which is 1,239 deaths. So that is a sharp decrease. But compare that to this valley, for example, June 4, eight deaths. Compare that eight deaths to 130 deaths, right? So there is definitely when you do times or percentage there is a a lot of time 10 12 time increase in number of deaths compare that to what it was when uk was actually in a bad state in terms of people dying then from that point of view it is much more controlled so uh, let's continue this is the patients in hospital so as you can see here July, let's go back to July 19 type time frame. And if you see, people are increasing and reducing in the hospitals, but still that trend is staying on a lower level compared to this. So once again, it's your own way of thinking. If you say, I want to compare this to this valley, we were supposed to stay at this valley and we have gone higher and that is a problem. Or you could say, hey, we were really in this bad state. And from there, we have really come down to here. You could also say the vaccines have not helped prevent cases, new cases. And I have been discussing this, that the vaccine is not really, this vaccines, respiratory vaccines, are really not going to stop a virus from entering our body. But you could also say that vaccines and the natural infections and children's population, they are kind of keeping it in a in a uh, more balanced, steady state. If these factors were not there, we would see more of such waves. Now, this is the new hospital admissions. If you see here, once again, increasing and reducing. But if we go back to July 18, 19 timeframe, when the uh, when UK started opening, they have been persistent at that level. And now look at this. UK was opening on July 19-ish, but they were going upwards even before that. So this is June. If you go to June 7, again, I'm not apologizing for anything. I, I have no idea what is the right thing, what is happening there. I'm just looking at data to say, we should look at the whole picture and understand, are they doing any better or not? So here in June, they were May, June, they were at a lower state of infections, and this is admissions. Then they started increasing, and by the time UK started opening, they were already on this slope. And then they persisted at this level, they fluctuated. And now if I could get, so these are the new deaths, COVID cases tests that are positive, and so on. So this is this data. I want to show some more. This is UK on Worldometer. So again, look at this daily new cases. Look at how broad this wave is. So this is, this started somewhere in July, in June 2, 3, and then started going up. And then I believe UK opened up, and then it just stayed in this state. It fluctuated, but it is there. And this is a seven days moving average. While, while vaccinated continue to increase, but I think the other factors, for example, people staying at home or lockdowns or masks or other ways of preventing, they were not there. Now, once again, from Worldometer's point of view, let's look at the uh, death rates. This is the data for death. So if you see here, 
This is the previous wave, 1,242 at a peak in January. Then went down to four, five, seven really low numbers. I wish that even these are not there. And then from compared to these low numbers in January, June, July, they are, so look where they started ramping up after July. So in July, they started going up. And after July, in August, September, they stayed up 112, 13. So the, that is a seven-day moving average. However, please realize, compared to this wave, look at the wave's size, this wave's size, and compare this wave to this wave, which means there are a lot of cases and high number of cases. But fortunately, at least from this data point of view, the number of deaths have become decoupled. That, I think, is an important thing to look at. It is possible now, and yes, we have done this discussion many times, that folks who are becoming ill now, higher number, 45,000, 44, 39, there, unfortunately, some of them would die a little later, four weeks, six weeks later. So there cannot be a mapping of saying October 20, 45,000 people sick, and October 20, let's say, 136 deaths, they are not to be matched because unfortunate that the cases will follow with the death after some weeks. But if we go to, I wish the Worldometer had these two graphs next to each other instead of putting all those extra graphs in between. So let's say here, July 19, a peak started occurring for the cases. And let's say, let's take August 2. August 2, four to six weeks later, will be September 2 to September 15. So here, 26,000-ish cases. And if you go to September, so September 2, 3, if you come before that, there is a very slight rise in the number of deaths. So there is a definite reflection of more cases to deaths, but that number is low. So that is UK. Uh, continuing to see some more. Now, could this be Delta Plus? And I'm seeing once again Delta Plus news. I think <laughs> this is a good way to kind of keep people uh, on their toes as well. We talked about Delta Plus a lot of weeks and months ago, and it seemed like Delta Plus was not something that would uh, catch up like Delta did. And remember, Delta Plus had its chance for a very long time. Delta had a chance and it just ramped up very fast. Delta Plus has been out there for some time as well. And at the moment, it is 6% of the COVID cases. So I am not too worried about Delta Plus. I don't think it would dominate Delta because it just is, when you look at Delta's progression, somewhere in September, October, they thought that Delta had started. In December timeframe, it just started taking off. And in January, February, it just started dominating. Delta Plus has never been able to do that. Even when uh, we saw this in India, it did not ramp up that way. But anyways, there are 6% COVID cases. It has not become a variant of concern yet. I think it is still in the early stages. I think it is going to stay in that stages. It had almost, what, nine, eight, nine months. If you compare its behavior with Delta, Delta was very fast. Okay, so that is the UK. And again, the, this is my observation and the data that I collected. I may be totally wrong here. There may be other factors. So folks who are there, for example, Bambi or John or others, how do you see when you are, if you are John, if you're there, Bambi, you are there, how do you see it? and other folks from from, uh, from UK. Now, continuing, France. France has done an interesting thing, and I have that. Uh... So let's look at Australia first, then we'll go to France. So Australia, UK, so my order is wrong here. Australia has is opening. So uh, on this Thursday, 
maybe this is time uh, in Australia to start opening up. On this Thursday, Melbourne is opening up. And uh, they have had the world's longest lockdown. So that is a uh, quite a toll that community took. So they are going to come out of the lock lockdown. So let's see here. Melbourne readies to exit world's longest COVID-19 lockdown. So it is an interesting read. Millions in Melbourne are readying to come out of the world's longest COVID-19 lockdown later on Thursday, even as cases hover near record levels with pubs, restaurants, and cafes rushing to restock supplies before opening their doors. Since early August, residents in Australia's second largest city have been in lockdown. Their sixth during the pandemic, sixth during the pandemic, to quell an outbreak fueled by the highly infectious Delta strain. So what they had said was, they had said that once we have 70% vaccination, then we would open up. So I think that that is the thought around um, herd immunity, that if we have more than 67, 70%, then we are kind of reaching near the herd immunity. I would add the people who got infected and recovered. I would add more younger children as well in better resistant population. Not that they are just herd immunity, but they, are, they have developed or they have some better resistance compared to people in my age and above. So Prime Minister Scott Morrison on th Thursday confirmed the state had reached that target with more restrictions set to ease as inoculation hit 80% and 90%. So it almost looks like he's saying when you get vaccinated, the more you get vaccinated, the more we will ease. Meanwhile, you would be in the lockdown. So the first 70% milestone is hit. So the society of Melbourne is opening up and he's saying more ease would come in as 80 to 90% happens. From 11.59 p.m. Thursday, pubs and cafes can have 20 fully vaccinated patrons indoors and 50 outdoors, while hairdressers can allow entry for five customers. Masks will still be mandatory both indoors and outdoors. So this is the news October 2020-21. France, <clears throat> I wanted to discuss this in the vaccine site as well. So France has uh, banned Moderna as a booster. So while US just approved Moderna as a booster, half dose or full dose, I'll discuss that in a separate talk today. France has banned Moderna temporarily at least as a booster. And they have said that the only booster allowed at this time is Pfizer's. And the reason that they have said is the pericarditis and myocarditis. Next is Denmark. In our, so I looked at this, I was looking at various countries and I looked at this picture and I really thought this is such a cute thing. This is what we miss here. Although US, for the most part, we have opened up as well. So this is a beautiful place and I wish we could go. All of us go there and sit down and have fun. So here, after 548 days with restrictions to limit the spread of COVID-19, Denmark's high vaccination rate has enabled the Scandinavian country to become one of the first European Union nations to lift all domestic restrictions. So that's interesting. More than 80% of the people have the above the age of 12 have had their two shots. That's very interesting. More than 80% of people above 12 years of age. And let's look at the Denmark's data here. This is their data. So consider that they are saying, hey, more than 80% have become vaccinated and now we are opening up. They, this is a September news. I'm a little late in, in sharing it, but it is still interesting to see. The France news is, Australia news is now. This is September. So here somewhere in September, Denmark decided to open. So what was their date on, in September? September 10. And so let's say this is September 10. So after that, they had a dip and then they went up again. What I do not know is what is the percentage of vaccination at this time. Still much better than where they were before. This is the confirmed cases. And this is the per million cases. So if I go to chart, this is their per million cases. And if you see, 
they are keeping it under control compared to where we were before. So definitely, I think there are so many factors. And tell me, what do you think? I think the factors are people have learned how to live with this virus. People have uh, so masks and physical distancing, uh, hygiene, vaccinations. Maybe there are more things than that as well. Children, younger uh, age uh, population and so on. So Luffy is outside. Give me one quick second. I'm going to let Luffy back in. Okay. Get ready for Luffy to sing the songs of his people. Now, this is the COVID-19 confirmed cases cumulative. Let's look at their... This is also cases per million. So remember, we saw US cases per million. So here is uh, cases per million people. So if I go here, this 1,726 biweekly. This is not daily, biweekly. That number we saw for US was daily. Change in confirmed cases and then confirmed deaths. So if you see here, really uh, 2.9, this is new confirmed deaths, so this is not a rate, this is new deaths on daily basis. So they, they had a bad time in January and now they are at a lower rate. Let's see if they have COVID-19 deaths per million people. And so that is also at a lower rate as well. So this is Denmark. Australia, we talked about Melbourne, Denmark opened in September, more than 80% vaccinated, and there has been significant change upward. There has not been significant upward or downward change in hospitalization or deaths. So this is what we have for the country, some of the countries, especially UK, because many of the outlets are actually saying that what is happening in UK is going to soon happen to the world. I think that... Um, UK is different, uh, number one, because there is vaccination levels are different, herd immunity levels are different, children's population would be different, their uh, opening up the society will be different. So it, it cannot be a 100% mapping of UK situation to others. And even then, if it is just the cases, yes, there are more, but it looks like number of deaths and hospitalizations are low, and which is a good news. So Bambi, what do you think? What is your, uh, what is happening in the UK? <laughs> Barbara says, now we are all distracted, Luffy in the house. So Luffy came in and he went all the way. I think he's going to go eat something and then he's going to start singing. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. So, Mark, this can be a very important point as well. Natural immunity, that is part, part of the herd immunity. I have always, whenever I draw the people who may have become part of the protected side, one, uh, those who became vaccinated. Second, those who became infected and recovered. Third, children and younger age and healthy individuals. So they all together make up and there would be asymptomatic naturally recovered, infected and recovered folks as well. All right, so I'm going to now uh, stop this talk and I will come back with one more talk about the vaccines. <laughs> Gift says, when they use the, when they mention the word herd, I feel like a cow out to pasture. Uh, we, this is the immunity, this is the epidemiolo epidemiology term that is in, used in the books, etc. Bambi says, um, Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, UK has lot, lots of selfish people refusing to voluntarily wear masks. They don't care if the NHS is overwhelmed. Yeah, I saw that to be a very uh, uh, repeated theme when I was reading up about UK that some people are not wearing masks. Here is you, here is Luffy with his songs. Okay, so uh, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, hey, Luffy. 
so please <laughs> luffy does not want me to say these things so please like subscribe and share and if you would like to support this work there are links in the description you can buy me a coffee i'm trying to sneak in these statements before luffy says something you can buy me a coffee or you can be a patron or you can use paypal all those links are in the description i would see you in a few minutes once more and we'll talk about vaccines and the fda's booster approval and so on so see you soon